This is Tracy Broussard with Road Dog Online and Rich Redmond, currently touring with Jason Aldean. I will never work in San Francisco again. Again? <laughs> so you worked there already? <laughs> I used to work at a bathhouse. <laughs> he may work here more, actually. Just kidding. I just I was the receptionist. <laughs> in today's crazy world, with all these social media and everything, it's like, you know, word of mouth is still the best. Mm -hmm. And you always have to play at the top of your game, and you always have to be on time, and your gear's got to sound great. You got to know yeah. the tunes, and you know somehow you know we've been able to do that. Um, majority of the time, I don't get the gigs from auditions. Like I, yeah. I, I, if I do get a gig from an audition, like with Pam Tillis, I went and auditioned, and she had a cattle call for like thirty drummers. Yep. Now, how are you going to pick apart thirty guys? Mm -hmm. you, I mean, you can hardly remember. Yeah. What did that? What did the first guy sound mm -hmm. like? But I had somebody grease the wheels for me. Somebody was like, you can have your cattle call all you want, but this is the guy you need to hire. I mean, at that point, if everybody's, if all the right guys are getting called for the audition, it's like apples and oranges, mm -hmm. ooples and bananas. It's like, you know, yeah. there's just, what do you want? Do you want yeah. the banana? Because everybody's at a certain level, mm -hmm. or should be. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, it's just a beautiful thing. I mean, when I, I, I gave my cassette to um, Eddie Bears and Lonnie Wilson, who were both were yeah. really incredibly helpful to me. They, they listened to my stuff and they said, hey kid, welcome to town. You know, here's a letter of recommendation. Um, let us know if you, know, you need any help. You know, now get, get dirty, get involved. And Lonnie hooked me up with my first um, little road gig and Eddie got me on a showcase. And it was like, mm -hmm. it was like we believe in you, now do it. Mm -hmm. Go do your thing, it just takes time. Yeah. And if I would have any advice for anybody, I would say, move to town with five or ten grand, you know what I mean, saved, yeah. and I didn't do that, you know, I had to work day jobs, I had to substitute mm -hmm. teach and wait tables and make copies, yeah. it was, oh. We didn't have, you know, all the, the ways to expose yourself to the world and, you know, say, you know, I exist, yeah. like today, you know, you can, there's web pages where you can yeah. advertise your goods and the way people are constantly connected, mm -hmm. we didn't have that, we had pay phones and, and a pager, but pager, I, yeah. I thought I was the slickest thing in town of when course. I got a pager, it was yeah. like, boop, 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 boop. Yes. and you're like, oh, this is a gig, and you pull over and you get to, get to the pay phone, it's like, hi, Rich, I'm just checking in with you, man, how you doing? Yeah. This is the gig line, man. Don't call me on the gig line. It was always really exciting to come home and see eight. You have eight new MCGs on mm -hmm. your answer machine, yeah. and you're like, you know, hey son, and, you know, parents checking right. in on you, how you doing, uh -huh. and you know, celebrating all your victories, you know, mm -hmm. that would come along, and you know, I, it took me eight months to get a tour. My first tour was with um, Ronna Reeves, mm -hmm. and she had made it. Um, well, she was finishing out her country career. And it was a package of, I was backing up Ronna Reeves and this cat named Rick Orozco, who was on Arista Records. And then, you know, that led to working with, you know, um, Ronna did a pop record with Peter Cetera, and we started doing some touring with that. And then I backed up Gene Watson mm -hmm. over in Japan, and, and, and one gig begat, another gig begat. It's like the Bible, you know, yeah. begat, begat, yes, begat, yes. <laughs> you know. You have to be patient yeah. and persistent mm -hmm. and determined and just realize that, you know, there's a place for you in the industry and, and... I call it the three P's. You have to have um, your playing, your people skills, and your personality. Mm -hmm. Playing, your personality, and your people skills. And your people skills are really 98% of, oh, of it course. because then when you get on the bus, mm -hmm. it's a 45-foot, million-dollar tube, a stinky bus with all the guys, you know, right? yeah. and, and nobody wants to be around the sad sack dude. Mm -hmm. You know, they want to be around the fun guy who's, yeah. who play well, mm -hmm. plays well with others. Cool. That was my first marquee gig, you know. Mm -hmm. And we were doing, you know, the... the the casino circuit and playing 18 top 10 singles and everybody yeah. knew every word I was like yeah this is I've arrived you know yeah. had somebody setting up my drums and this is cool of this course. is what I've been working for yeah. it was great because um, you know uh, it, you know, t that kind of stuff teaches you to be really consistent because she wanted those temples exactly the same every night and she wanted things very much like the record but at the same time she encouraged my creativity mm -hmm. it was you know like it's that people skills that thing that comes in again it's yeah, like three P's you talked about yeah the three P's um, and it, it was awesome I was playing hit songs you know night after night and and um, you know I just met a lot of people during the process that led to other gigs mm -hmm. you know because we're, we're what you call a journeyman drummer. Yeah. I went out with Rana and then Rick Orozco and then this group called Regina Regina and then Susan Ashton and Gene Watson and Hank the Third and Earl Thomas. And it's like old country stars, new country stars, mm -hmm. and some gigs lasted a day and some lasted a month and some lasted a year. But 
you know, I always always had a gig, never missed a meal, you mm -hmm. know, and 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 I just, I love to play. So, so um, Pam Tills thing was about two two years, and then after that, that led to um, me playing with um, Tim Rushla. Tim Rushla mm -hmm. was on Atlantic Records, and right as he was finishing his deal with Atlantic Records. Um, we decided to start a band called Rushlow. Mm -hmm. The Rushlow thing came about because in 1997, when that first month in town in, the, in uh -huh. Nashville, I was down playing um, in Printer's Alley, and I forget the club. It, it was Barbara's. Okay. Remember Barbara's, yeah, the old that, club? Not there anymore, yeah. Right. So uh, here I am playing in Barbara's, and you know, just learning on the bandstand how to really be a good, confident, tra traditional country drummer. Playing the cross to get all the right spots. Da -ba -doom -ji -do -boom -ban. Center of the snare, no rim shot, the whole deal, you know? And uh, so this, this cat walks in right as we're playing Superstition. Dun, dun, yeah. dun, dun. So the only funky song we do all night, and it's Kurt's dad, Ken Allison. Uh -huh. So Ken Allison comes in, he goes, I'm Ken Allison, I have a band called the Blues Other Brothers, we're looking for a drummer, and, and he, here's my card, call me. So I, he says, Come on out to this club called Mare Bulls mm -hmm. down a look, down on Second Avenue, and I and I go down and I sit see the band and I sit in with the band, and the first tune we have to play is Brick House, you know every you know what's that lick at the beginning? If you don't know that, you just gotta quit. And so we sat in with that, and Kurt was the guitar player in the band. Kurt Allison, who's Jason Aldean's guitar player, and was the guitar player with in Rushlow. So. We just hit it off immediately, like, you know, did the fill, came in, and he's looking at me like, oh, who's this dude? I'm like, oh, who's that dude? And, you know, that was the birth of a great friendship and a great musical relationship, and we've been playing together for 12 years now. Wow. Three presidencies. Yeah. Wives have come and gone, <laughs> girlfriends have come and gone, clothing styles have come and gone. Kurt and I are still playing That's together. Awesome. And so that led to, um, in 1999... I was doing a gig with Amy Johns, who mm -hmm. owns Flavor in Nashville, which is this, that's the slamming boutique oh, yeah. right there on DeMondron. And she was pursuing a singing career, and we were, you know, she was playing all over, you know, the Nashville area, and she was playing a gig at Kickers. Wow. Kickers in yeah. Clarksville? Yeah. And so Kurt champions me and says, this guy will come in, he'll know the five, we did, we were doing five sets, five 45-minute sets with 15-minute breaks, no rehearsal. She just gave me the tape and said, learn all these tunes. So, you know, charted all the tunes mm -hmm. out, got all the BPMs. We ran through a couple of them at at, um, at Soundcheck, and Tully Kennedy was the bass player. Mm -hmm. And we did, I think we did a Trisha Yearwood song, Baby I Lied or something. Shut the boom, did the bzzz, boom, bang, ga. First bar, Tully looks at me, he goes, I look at Tully and I go, so it was a birth of a great partnership, and now we're going on 10 years mm -hmm. playing together. So 12 years with Kurt, Ten years with Tully, ten years with this rhythm section has mm -hmm. been together. And and when it was time for a, another very successful colleague of ours, Brian Pruitt, to leave mm -hmm. Tim Rushlow's gig, they brought me in, mm -hmm. and that became Rushlow. We did, we had put out two singles on Lyric Street Records, and had fun, learned a whole different side of the business, learned about, you know, going and schmoozing radio. Because you're part and, of the band yeah. now. Yeah, and we were, you know, were involved in the imaging and involved with shaking hands and signing autographs and being involved with every aspect of the organization. Whereas if you're a side man, you know, like you and I, we, you know, if Jason or Blake have a benefit and they're not making any money, we still go when we get paid for our time, which is amazing. It's, it's less responsibilities. But it was cool to see that whole thing, you know, the one for all, all for one mentality, being in a band like, you know, the Beatles or something, yeah. you know, and traveling with your best pals, uh -huh. you know, and and going to every radio station in the country and, and thanks for playing our single or please play our mm -hmm. single. You know? So we put out two singles and then that thing imploded. 